a bitter environmental lawsuit against Chevron, the second largest oil company in the United States, appears to be entering its critical phase in Ecuador. The plaintiffs say when Chevron bought Texaco Incorporated in 2001, it assumed that company's environmental liability in Ecuador. Chevron says it is the victim of a massive misinformation campaign in which facts are twisted and scientific data are ignored. It is high stakes litigation filled with dramatic claims and counterclaims. Bottom line, who is responsible for current conditions in Ecuador's rainforest and who should pay to clean it up? The plaintiffs say billions of dollars ride on the verdict. The Oriente oil fields in the Amazon rainforest of Ecuador. Since 1990, they have been worked by government-run Petro Ecuador, which took sole ownership of the area in 1992. That's when its consortium minority partner and oil field operator, Texaco Petroleum's contract expired. During a 20-year concession, about 1.7 billion barrels of crude oil was produced here. Texaco netted $490 million. Nearly $25 billion went to the government of Ecuador in oil, taxes, and royalties. Before leaving the country, Texaco spent three years and $40 million to environmentally remediate its one-third of the operation as required by the Ecuadorian government. When the work was completed in 1998, Ecuador gave its approval and released Texaco and any successor companies from all future claims and obligations. But by then, there was already a class-action rainforest contamination suit against Texaco Incorporated for $1.5 billion filed in the United States in 1993. The lead attorney was an Ecuadorian-born, U.S.-based attorney named Cristobal Bonifaz. He carried the banner of the Amazon Defense Front, now known as the Amazon Defense Coalition. Ultimately dismissed on jurisdictional grounds, the case was refiled in Ecuador in 2003 in the town of Lago Agrio, near the Colombian border. Plaintiff's attorneys claim to represent some 30,000 rainforest inhabitants. The new defendant, U.S. oil giant Chevron, which bought Texaco Incorporated in 2001. The company got a rude greeting. The court allowed the claims against it to proceed under an environmental law enacted nine years after Texaco ended its Ecuador operations. Now, the plaintiffs are calling for Chevron to pay billions of dollars in damages charged with everything from environmental destruction to unjust enrichment. The San Ramon, California-based company calls it part of a long-running attempt by contingency fee-based lawyers to extort a big payoff. They've only used the court as a springboard for their headlines and to launch a smear campaign against the company and, and all of that with the end of trying to get Chevron to settle the case. The plaintiffs and their allies scoff at that and charged Chevron has been engaged in a corporate cover-up of the situation it assumed with the purchase of Texaco. For its part, Chevron says current impacts in the Oriente can be traced to state-run Petro-Ecuador and what it calls that company's well-documented record of environmental neglect. According to the Ecuadorian media, from 2002 to 2007 alone, Petro-Ecuador was responsible for more than a thousand oil spills. Even the plaintiff's lead Ecuadorian attorney, Pablo Fajardo, told an interviewer, it is true, Petro Ecuador has caused an environmental disaster, but that's the matter of another lawsuit. In fact, when Petro Ecuador made some moves toward remediation, Fajardo demanded it stop, saying it was interfering with his lawsuit. Why then does Chevron face the possibility of civil damages in the billions? For one thing, after three years of litigation, an Ecuadorian trial judge abruptly canceled more than half the judicially supervised evidence inspections of Texaco remediated areas. After noisy anti-Chevron street demonstrations in Lago Agrio, the judge moved directly to a damage assessment covering all former Texaco sites, inspected or not. Only one such site, called Sacha 53, underwent a full inspection process. In 2006, counter to the plaintiff's claims, an independent panel of experts found that Texaco's remediation here had followed Ecuadorian government requirements. It concluded the remediated area posed little health risk. Dealt this defeat, the plaintiff said they would no longer share the cost of the independent panel, and the panel's work ended. Sacha 53 now is a plantation of African palms and pasture land. 
Chevron says its hundreds of water and soil tests prove that none of Texaco's remediated sites left any lasting environmental damage. For the metals, they're at background levels. There are no excesses of metals in the soil. For hydrocarbons, we look particularly for those hydrocarbons that might result in health risk, like benzene, polyaromatic hydrocarbons, and all of those are present at very low concentrations that don't pose a risk to human health. The plaintiffs charge such claims are based on junk science. Not so, says Pedro Alvarez, head of Rice University's Department of Civil and Environmental Engineering, a Chevron expert. When Texaco left Ecuador, the sites that it operated, I would consider represented a relatively safe scenario for, with regards to potential impacts to human health, both because of the measures that they took to contain and clean up any contamination, and because of the nature of the contaminants that have very little mobility and therefore little probability to reach a potential receptor. On the charge of lasting environmental damage. That is a vastly exaggerated charge that is unsupported by the evidence. The plaintiffs say their test results tell a different story. Dozens of former Texaco sites with high levels of dangerous toxins. But Chevron's McMillan says there is a problem. The laboratory where the plaintiffs took many of their test samples. Well, the laboratory that the plaintiffs used called Havoc Labs in Quito was not accredited by the organization in Ecuador responsible for accrediting laboratories. We tried to inspect that lab on numerous occasions under judge's orders to try to, to investigate, and we were not able to, to carry out that investigation. Um, we know that the data are very suspect from that lab. Still, the people of Oriente do have major health issues. If not caused by Texaco-era contamination, then what? The Chevron side blames a more basic problem, the flow of raw sewage into the region's streams and rivers. These pictures were shot in the town of La Jolla de las Sachas, near where Texaco operated. Chevron asked toxicologist Thomas McHugh to study the issue. The health effects that have been reported are attributable to exposure to bacteria, which is widespread in the drinking water sources. They're not attributable to petroleum exposure. No doubt about that. There's no doubt in my mind. Despite the claims. That's correct. There are fears such findings may be trumped by politics. Ecuador's President Rafael Correa loudly supports the case against Chevron. At Correa's instigation, with the support of the Amazon Defense Coalition, seven Ecuadorian officials who signed Texaco's environmental liability release face criminal charges. Two Chevron attorneys in Ecuador have been indicted. The company calls it an obvious attempt at intimidation. The plaintiffs say Chevron's strategy is to undermine the credibility of the Ecuadorian justice system. Chevron's Silvia Garrigo argues Ecuador wants to rewrite the past by effectively canceling its liability release to Texaco. The government is attempting to undo the release because in undoing the release it would permit the plaintiffs to proceed and obtain a verdict against Chevron. Meanwhile, there are those huge damage numbers. They come from Richard Cabrera, a mining engineer, appointed as a court expert. Chevron insists Cabrera vastly exceeded his mandate by ignoring the court's instructions, that he was unqualified, and that his 4,000-page report was done in collaboration with the plaintiffs. In November 2008, Cabrera called for a stunning increase in the total claim against Chevron, from $16 billion to $27 billion. Consider this. In his amended report, Cabrera quotes directly from a plaintiff's court document filed two months earlier. Referring to the cost for cleaning up TPH, total petroleum hydrocarbons in the soil, both the plaintiffs and Cabrera come up with precisely the same dollar approximation, $2,034,000,000. Not only that, the only differences in language where the plaintiffs write the cost analysis, Cabrera refers to, quote, my analysis. Where the plaintiff's document uses the phrase, the real cost to remediate the soils, Cabrera adopts the same words and simply refers to, quote, my revised calculations. Otherwise, Cabrera takes the plaintiff's finding verbatim, up to and including the $2 billion bottom line. Then there are photos to consider. The man in the red shirt is Donald Moncayo, apparently assisting Cabrera's so-called independent search for evidence. 
Moncayo is a leading activist with the Amazon Defense Coalition, the designated recipient of any court-awarded damages in Ecuador. In this shot, Moncayo is wearing a yellow shirt. Cabrera is seen leaning against a tree. Douglas McKay teaches at the University of California, Davis. On Cabrera's report... The report that I've seen contains uh, a lot of generalizations, a lot of unfounded accusations. It uh, also includes some evaluation of detail, but uh, not in a way that we generally would view as scientifically defensible. So it would not pass what we call peer review. It, it doesn't function as a scientifically valid document. Cabrera allegation that Texaco illegally dumped billions of gallons of toxic water into the rainforest. Chevron says that so-called produced water brought to the surface during production is not considered toxic waste in the United States or any other part of the world. Further, it argues, Texaco separated out the crude oil and treated the water before safely discharging it into the environment. On Texaco's remediation of the 161 waste oil pits assigned to it by the government of Ecuador, Chevron says the liquid contents were removed and the soil cleaned to the full satisfaction of the government. Perhaps the most explosive public charge by the plaintiffs, that Texaco's operations led to the eradication of large numbers of indigenous peoples, is nowhere to be found in the Cabrera report. Anthropologist Robert Wasserstrom says there is good reason for that. You look at population figures from those Indian groups over the last uh, 40 years or so, you see very clearly that indigenous populations have been growing in the, in, in the uh, oil production area. Cabrera does say that the health of native groups has suffered from oil development. He claims there is an increased incidence of cancer in Oriente and that it is tied to Texaco. Epidemiologist Michael Kelch says that claim is disproven by official Ecuadorian statistics, which he has studied. We looked at cancer mortality rates in the Amazon region in general, and we compared those rates to Quito, and we found that the Amazon region has much lower cancer rates. We also compared the regions that where there were oil activities in the Amazon to regions where there were no oil activities, and really found no differences, actually found slightly lower rates of cancer in these regions. In fact, individual health claims from the Texaco days in Ecuador have already been knocked down by a federal judge here in the United States. In September 2007, here in San Francisco, the last of nine cancer allegations against Chevron were dismissed, and a U.S. District Court judge issued a stinging rebuke to the attorneys who brought the claims, which he termed baseless. Their inquiry, he said, was so minimal as to be unreasonable and incompetent. The lead attorney was sanctioned. That attorney was Cristobal Bonifaz, the man who filed the original suit against Texaco back in 1993. In Ecuador, the remaining plaintiff's attorneys say Chevron is trying to use Bonifaz, no longer a part of their team, to discredit their case. Meanwhile, in Lago Agrio, the latest in a series of trial judges is considering the two basic issues, liability and damages. So why doesn't Chevron offer a settlement and get all this trouble behind it? If Chevron were to settle this case in the context of what has occurred, which are unethical trial tactics, unethical NGO smear campaigns based on false evidence, the message that it would be sending to the litigation community is that Chevron will settle cases based on those tactics and not based on the rule of law and admissible evidence. A decision is not expected before late this year. Chevron says if the verdict goes against it, it will appeal in Ecuador and, if needed, will fight its enforcement. This is Gene Randall reporting.